Okay, welcome to part two of this video in which we are computing the output voltage of a simple circuit that has a dependent voltage source. Uh, this is a single loop circuit and as we showed in part one, this, uh, the analysis is conceptually pretty simple. It turns out, however, this analysis has gotten fairly complex. The reason for that is that we have our uh, dependent source driven by VF, and VF turns out to be not particularly easy to compute. We have to find an equation um, that it relates VF and I. So it's been um, a little tricky, but uh, barring any really ugly mistakes, we're at the point where we now know the current flowing through the loop. And with that knowledge of the current flowing through the loop, we can now find what VF is. So let's see, we've already uh, gone through this idea once where we use KVL around the purple loop. So we have then that I times minus J2K minus 10VF plus VF is equal to zero. This is just applying KVL around this loop again. And now we know what I is. We can take this and plug it in here. And uh, when we do that, and we'll take these guys, move them over to this side of the equation. So we'll have 9VF is equal to this expression for I times negative J2K. So let's uh, do that computation. And we have 0.7 milliamps. Here we'll actually work this out. 0.7 milliamps plus I times 0.583 milliamps. And this is multiplied by negative I times 2,000. And that gives us 1.166 minus J1.4. Okay, so we now that we know that this guy now is 1.166 volts minus J1.4 volts. And we can now divide this by 9, and we'll have then that VF is equal to 0.130 minus J times 0.156, and these are both volts. Okay, we're almost there. We know that V out is negative 10 VF. Okay, now this is a computation that's simple enough I could probably do it without resorting to alpha, but if I do resort to alpha, it's easier because I've been uh, collecting my values here. And alpha will convert this from rectangular into polar coordinates. So I get that the final result is wrong because I left out my negative 10 here. Okay, so the magnitude is 2.02 and the angle is 129.78 actually call it 129.8 degrees. Okay, so I go back to my picture and we have then that V0 is equal to 2.02 volts at an angle of 129.8 degrees. 
And there you have it. That was a pretty involved computation, but barring mistakes, which are probably fairly likely, um, that's what that's what we have. Okay, so we've completed step three in solving for or in solving the uh, circuit. The last thing we need to do is take v out that we've got right here and express it as a time function. So let's see, where is a good place to express v out as a time function? Uh, I guess we'll do it right here. We have v out is 2.02 .02 volts cosine 5000 t plus 129.8 degrees. So there we have it. That's the answer. Again, barring any mathematical errors, uh, which, uh, given my track record, uh, there's probably one or two there. So extra points to people that can find them and point them out. So um, we've gone through an AC steady state analysis with a single loop circuit. And it turned out this single loop circuit was a bit tricky owing to the fact that our uh, unknown or our dependent source, uh, the voltage was actually uh, fairly closely related to the output of the source. And so it took a bit of work to get this one worked out. But there it is. So hopefully you found this useful and uh, we'll see you later.